हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माइंड स्पाइन एजुकेशन दिस लेक्चर इज अबाउट प्रैक्टिस प्रॉब्लम ऑन द टॉपिक्स दैट वी कवर्ड इन लास्ट थ्री सेशन ऑफ दिस सीरीज सो वील डू प्रैक्टिस प्रॉब्लम एंड द दिस प्रैक्टिस प्रॉब्लम आई हैव टेकन फ्रॉम आवर प्लेटफॉर्म माइंड स्पाइन एजुकेशन डॉट कॉम आई हैव टेकन फ्यू प्रॉब्लम टू मेक दिस वीडियो कंसाइज and not very lengthy but uh, if you want to practice more you can just go here at uh, mindspaneducation.com and uh, here you will get all the practice problem there are so many practice problems covering different topics and different concepts so to practice here you can go here we have uploaded uh, so many practice problems on calculus linear algebra and probability in first phase we are covering this subject later on in later phase we will bring other subjects so let's start first problem what it says which of the following statements is true about the function this is the function when its domain and codomain are both r so it is trying to say that function is defined like this from r to r and actual definition of the function is this fx is injective only fx is subjective only fx is bijective fx is neither injective nor subjective so let's see how do we uh, see uh, solve this let's see how first of all let's see how we find out how we mathematically prove whether a function is in injective or not what we do is first we consider that the function is not one to one and uh, we if we are able to contradict that then we will say it is one to one it is like proving by contradiction so let's take two values x1 and x2 in domain r these two values are different and we will say that fx1 equal to fx2 if this happens then that function is not one one i mean for two different value if it is giving same output then it is not one to one function so let's see uh, let's try to expand this fx1 will become 3x1 square minus 2x1 this is the definition of the function so fx1 is 3x1 square minus 2x1 plus 1 equal to fx2 equal to 3x2 square minus 2x2 plus 1 what it will become like this just solve this it will become 3 x1 square minus x2 square minus 2 x1 minus x2 equal to 0 on further solving we will get 3 x1 minus x2 into x1 plus x2 minus 2 x1 minus x2 equal to 0 this will give x1 minus x2 if we take x1 minus x2 common this will become 3 x1 plus x2 minus 2 equal to 0 so for this part of this equation this let's take out this one it becomes x1 plus x2 equal to 2 by 3 so it is giving a solution it means it has infin infinitely many solution from this part that means even if we say x1 and x2 are different and this does not become 0 then this part may become 0 with this condition x1 plus x2 equal to 2 by 3 it will become 0 that means we, we are able to get fx1 equal to fx2 with this condition and even though x1 and x2 are different so that means this is not one to one function we are able to find x1 and x2 for which fx1 equal to fx2 so this is not one to one function second let's see 
whether it is sub subjective or not whether codomain is uh, uh, equal to range or not how do we do that first let's see how we calculate that first let's assume y equal to 3x square minus 2x plus 1 Th this was the function on solving this we will get y by 3 equal to we took 3 common and this becomes x square minus uh, 2 by 3 x means 2 x into 1 by 3 we are just uh, adjusting the, this to make whole square so that it becomes the actual equation of parabola uh, that will give us some idea about the range and domain and uh, plus 1 by 9 and minus 1 by 9 what it, it does we are trying to make it whole square we added 1 by 9 to make it whole square and we subtracted it and we also had plus 1 uh, let's write here plus 1 so this will become y by 3 equal to x minus 1 by 3 whole square and sorry this will become 1 by 3 not 1 1 by 3 so 1 by minus 1 by 9 and 1 by 3 this will become 2 by 3 2 by 9 sorry this will become 2 by 9 now it becomes like this if we take 2 by 9 this side this will become x minus 1 by 3 whole square equal to if we take 1 by 3 out this will become y minus 2 by 3 like this finally if you adjust this equation this will become like this so this is a parabola this is x square equal to 4ay kind of parabola this kind of parabola what will be the graph of this parabola if we draw the graph then we will get the exact idea of domain and range if it is x and this is y then x will become 1 by 3 here x equal to 1 by 3 and y equal to 2 by 3 so this parabola is like this and this point is 1 by 3 2 by 3 so you see y is never going below this line it is always above 2 by 3 so range range of this function is from 2 by 3 to infinity but never it's it never goes below 2 by 3 so but the codomain is given in the co question that co codomain is r but range is different so codomain not equal to range so this function is not surjective means it is not onto so second option is also wrong this was wrong this is also wrong so this will only become true when both are true so this is also wrong so d is the correct option this function is neither injective nor sur surjective so this is how you should get the idea i mean don't go on single single problem you should get the idea how to prove and how to how do we calculate and how do we understand that whether a function is one one or not how do we mathematically prove it okay let's move to the next problem this is next problem what is the domain of the function fx equal to under root ln 4 minus x square how do we calculate domain we need to find all possible value uh, that this function can take as input so how do we do that we need to check whether uh, what are those value of, values of x for which this function is defined it should not break any mathematical rule so first rule by looking at this function we can say the first rule is let me zoom little bit okay now it's clear so this function to calculate the domain we have to find the values of x for which this function does not break any mathematics rule so first thing under log 
it should never become less than 0. So, 4 minus x square should always remain greater than 0. For log to be defined, this condition must be satisfied. That means, x square should always be less than 4 or we can say that x should lie between minus 2 and 2, first condition. And second condition will come from root. Under root, we cannot have negative uh, values. So, ln 4 minus x square should be greater than greater than equal to 0, second condition. That means, 4 minus x square should be greater than equal to 1. If we take ln this side, e, e raised to power 0 will become 1. Or we can say x square should be less than equal to 3. This will give us x is from minus root 3 to root 3. These two conditions it should satisfy to become a function. So, if we take common of both the condition, we will get minus 2 and 2 is upper, uh, you can say superset of uh, this uh, interval. So, it will become minus root 3 to root 3. This will become the common interval of this function. So, it can take only these values. So, answer will become b minus root 3 to root 3. Let us see one other problem. What it says? Which of the following statements are true about the function? This is the function f x equal to x minus this is greatest integer function. It, it is defined like this greatest integer function. It is like largest integer less than or equal to x. So, first option the function is periodic with fundamental period 1. We will check whether this is correct or not. If a function is periodic with period t, then we if we put f x plus t in f x, this will become f x itself. So, we will check like this. Let us see f x plus 1 is same or not. We can say x plus 1 minus greatest integer function x plus 1. So, this will become x plus 1 minus x minus 1 greatest integer for 1 is 1. For integer, it does not change anything. For uh, other values, it takes the floor uh, of that uh, value. So, this will become x minus greatest integer x. This again becomes f x if you no notice. So, this is correct. This means the function has uh, this period as 1. The function has a range 0 to 1. Let us see, we can say that since we know that that this greatest integer function is always greater than or equal to x or let us see, we can define it like this. We can say that x is always less than greater greatest integer uh, x plus 1 and greatest integer x. We can say like this. Uh, this is correct, right? For any x, if it is 4.3, so greatest integer x will become 4 and greatest integer 4.3 again will become 4 plus 1, 5. So, x will always lie between 1 lesser integer to 1 greater integer between that, okay? So, if we subtract greatest integer from everywhere, we will get 0 greater than equal to it will always be lesser than, it will never become uh, what I am trying to say, see, if it is 5, let us say, we are saying it will be from 4 to 4.3 will be from 4 to 5, it will not become 5 ever, it will be lesser than 5, okay. It is like flooring, we are flooring, it will become 5 when x becomes exact 5 it will go to the next interval from 5 to 6 like that. This will be become x minus greatest integer x and 1 sorry not e equal to. So, this is the function 
if we subtract a greatest integer from everywhere we this becomes like that but this is actually if you notice this is the, our function fx so fx becomes greater than equal to 0 and less than 1 so this is the value of fx so fx value lies from 0 to 1 we can say it is a starting from 0 and going till 1 uh, but it is not giving 1 ever ok so second option what was second option the function has a range from 0 to 1 this is correct the function is continuous at integer values let us see ok these two thing are coming from uh, continuity and differentiability we will check uh, we will cover this in next video so currently i will ex uh, skip th checking this so this is actually correct i will explain why and this is not correct answer for this question is a b and c uh, in next video when i cover uh, continuity and differentiability then we will understand uh, how to check these things okay so this was the question next question let's move to next question here the fourth one f uh, what is this question let fx equal to ln this one and uh, x lies between from minus 1 to 1 the inverse of function fy equals to we have to find inverse of this function uh, in last video i explained how to find inverse we do like this we assume y equal to ln 1 plus x by 1 minus x one plus x by one minus x and we try to find x in terms of y so take the uh, anti log with e base e both side then we will get e to the power, power y equal to one plus x by one minus x and we when we adjust this equation we get uh, e to the power y minus x into e to the power y equal to 1 plus x and when we separate uh, this x from everywhere we will get e to the power y minus 1 equal to uh, x plus if we take common x 1 plus e to the power y we will get this now we can write this it like this x equal to e to the power y minus 1 by 1 plus e to the power y. So, so when we made this uh, like this, like uh, when we represented it in x in terms of y, then this function is the inverse of the function that we have started. So, f inverse y is e to the power y minus 1 by 1 plus e raised to power y. This is f inverse. So, which one matches this option e raised to power y minus 1 by e raised to power y plus 1 this is correct these are not correct this also not correct this also not correct. So, a is the correct option here. So, what I am trying to say here is you have to practice a lot to master this mathematics either calculus linear algebra or any probability or anything you have to practice a lot. So, we have put a lot of practice problem go to mindspaneducation.com and do the practice for all the subject. So, read first and go here and do the practice. Thank you everyone.